Swayze with an on-the-spot report of the big automotive news for 1959. News that is being made in South Bend, Indiana. This is a first-hand report of what I saw and what I heard at South Bend. In order to preview Model X, I was invited to attend the Studebaker-Packard National Dealer Council meeting. I could feel the excitement build as Sid Skillman, Vice President and General Sales Manager, addressed the Dealer Council members. It's a real pleasure to welcome you here because for 1959, we have moved into a new marketing position, a planned marketing position one that will provide our dealers with new sales and profit opportunities. Now let's look at the facts. Every newspaper and magazine today is reporting on what the consumer really wants in an automobile. You've all read them. They all indicate the ever-increasing demand for the smaller, more functional car. And these publications quote the results of survey after survey conducted to determine what the people want and must have in their cars. It's truly a revolutionary trend. And one big important fact stands out and will not be denied. And that is that we are seeing today an increasingly larger segment of potential automobile buyers who demand smaller and more economical cars. And because other manufacturers have literally price themselves up the low price field, we alone have a wide open opportunity to move in and take over. And we have just the product line to do it, the all new Model X. Last year, the Scotsman and Mercedes-Benz pioneered our move toward this new selective marketing position. That is the hard core of our program for 1959. Now this year, we reach the climax with a completely new, high-quality car, one that will be economical to buy, economical to operate, and one that will have high resale value. In other words, Model X is designed, fashioned, and created to meet the specific demands of the present-day automotive market. Yes, Mr. Skillman was pointing out where the treasure was buried, all right. But you know, I had a question, and I took it to the man who was engineered and manufactured automobiles for over 30 years. Harold was engineered and manufactured automobiles for over 30 years. Harold Churchill, president of Studebaker Packard. Well, Mr. Churchill, I can see the potential market for Model X, but do you think you'll be alone in this field? I certainly do, John. You must realize that we've developed a completely new and modern concept of automobile transportation. We have, in a short time, translated our product philosophy into action. We will produce the car that our customers, our dealers, and our shareholders tell us they want and will buy. Our 1959 Model X line and our new market position puts us solidly into this specific low-priced field. And with fewer models, our dealers can carry a better balanced and faster-moving inventory. This means more concentrated impact from advertising and promotions activities. Well, I can see what you mean by a new concept of automotive transportation, Mr. Churchill, and it is an exciting program. Yes, this has been the most exciting year of my automotive career. In this short time, we've come from clay models to the brand new, all new automobile that the public is clamoring for. Well, it's a tremendous automotive story you've wrapped up in a few words, Mr. Churchill, and it seems to me your dealers are going to have a long jump on the industry. That's exactly right. Studebaker dealers now have an exclusive opportunity to sell a distinctive new car, a just-right car, one that's full family size, a car that's economical to operate, and a car that's priced where the public wants it. Model X will be the hottest car to hit the market in years. The car is right, the timing is perfect. The profit potential for dealers is tremendous. But John, why not hear the styling and engineering story behind Model X for yourself? I took Mr. Churchill's advice 
and went to the design center to see for myself. There I met two men who played major roles in making Model X a reality. Gene Hardy, chief engineer, and Duncan McRae, head of styling. Hello, John. John. Gentlemen, I found that Mr. Churchill is very enthusiastic about Model X and the philosophy behind this all-new car. What makes Model X an all-new car? Well, John, there's a new, more economical six-cylinder engine and a new shorter, more rigid and stronger frame. And a new size and new styling. Well, that certainly does make it new, but how did it come about? What was your point of view? What did you fellas have in mind? The owner's requirements, John. We knew he wanted a more compact and more economical car, but we also knew that he wanted comfort, both in terms of roominess and riding quality, and the smart appearance that gives pride of ownership. Well, you know, fellas, that seems to me a pretty tall order, and I wonder if you succeeded. We think so, John. Just look what Dunk has done to the front end, for example. Here we took new and basically beautiful shapes and accented the highlights with just the right amount of chrome. This is but an illustration, John. I'm sure that you'll want to see the finished car. Tell me, will I be able to see an actual car? Sure, John, but it's out at the proving grounds. You know we have to test these prototypes extensively under all conditions. They've got to be right not only in theory, but in practice as well. Dunk, that grill has a hint of a hawk about it. That's on purpose, John. It reflects the spirit of a new era in cars, a distinctiveness engendered by an unchanging styling note. And here, because the grill has the elegance, simplicity, and functional purpose that is the keynote of all basically fine design, we've made it the dominant design theme. You'll notice that there are no unnecessary shapes, chromes, textures, or multiple headlights to detract from the clean, uncluttered, styling effect that we were after. Not only is it pleasing to the eye, but that styling allowed us to design the front end panel all in one piece, which adds considerable stiffness and rigidity to the front end sheet metal. You get a tighter car. I noticed the same design is carried through to the rear. Yes, we carried the same styling theme throughout the entire automobile. It gives the car unity and an overall personality. Not only that, but with this design, it permitted us to use removable quarter panels. If your wife should dent her car, it'll cost you a lot less to get it back into the shape that Duck originally designed into it. As a dealer, how does that strike you, Mr. Goodwin? You'd be surprised how many dealers are conscious of body repair costs these days. So Gene is building a real sales point. Fine. Well, Mr. Afton, how do you like the styling of Model X? Mr. Swayze, I can sell that car in Lux alone. What's more, in my opinion, the style will last for years. But I'd really like to know what else it's got. Gordon, Frank, to mention a few new features, you have a choice of two engines in Model X. There's the improved V8, and here's the brand new 6. The 6 has a shorter stroke, a new combustion chamber designed with higher compression ratio, a new carburetor with an automatic choke. And I might add that all the sixes for 1959 will incorporate an automatic choke. It all results in greater of Model X will be considerably less than the 1958 Scotsman. And here we have an improved front suspension, still incorporating a Studebaker Packard first with variable rate front spring. This spring, as you know, compensates for vehicle loading and road roughness. It also reduced body roll on curves. But gentlemen, the real story behind Model X is the story of size.